Okay, everybody, the presidential tour is here. And a little bit different event. It's called, and I, let me just read you some of the details, the Alfalfa River Rendezvous. It's located in an older community of Homeland, Florida. I don't know if you can see me, I might be in the shade. There you go. But, um, this is, um, it's done by the, hosted by the Florida Frontiersmen. This is their 40th annual one. And it runs from, like, the 16th through the 27th, but, um, 25th and 26th is open to the public, which is I'm here now. And let me see. All right, this thing won't move. Okay, it's the largest living history event in the southeast, with over a thousand adults and hundreds of children uh, creating a pre-1840s encampment. It draws over 100 traders and thousands of visitors and school children. They have vendors here and things like that. And it's surrounded by like a, a stockade, like an old fort. So, and it's really big. It's like um, over 300 acres, I thought they said. So there's a lot here. So, check it out. And I have a map and I'll show you guys. But uh, this kind of reminds me when I went to um, that Civil War reenactment to the Battle of Narcosi Mill. Let me show you a little map here. So it's pretty big. And they're supposed to have like room making and flint napping. Here's some of the demonstrations and music. You see that. And Homeland is right next to um, Bartow, Florida, which I've done other videos at. Like I said, it's an older community. Um, came back to like the 1800s. Anyways, let's check the sound, see what's around here. There's a lot here. Alright, onward and upward. Hi, I show this this place is so big. Actually gave itself street names. Long Eagle Trade Co. Custom Leather Work. It's a lot of cool vendors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some cool teepees too. It's supposed to have like hundreds of period accurate dwellings. It's basically the tents, I think. I don't think there's any main structure, it's like a cool wagon. It's kind of a bit a little bit overwhelming. Um, there's a lot here. Just keep moving around, looking. A lot of cool stuff. Man, you can imagine using that old recreation of an old outhouse. Ooh, that must have been cold in the winter time. I tell you, this thing is huge. It just keeps going and going and going. A lot of different, um, a lot of different stuff. Uh oh, I wonder if Captain was it Jack Sparrow was around. No, oh, Johnny Deppy might be here. Isn't that called? I think the, like the was it the Getson flag or something like that. It's right in front of that teepee. It's pretty cool. Mm. Cane shirt, five dollars and. Candle's not bad that way. Some of the cool things for sale. Say it's over 75 cents. There's definitely a lot of vendors here. You know, you gotta think about it. it's interesting. When you look at these, when you go to these type of events, you know, these dwellings and these setups, it only really gives you a taste of how it was back then. So obviously you still look around and you still see modern stuff. You know, planes flying overhead, people's cell phones going off. So it's not 100% ever will be authentic, really. It's really nowhere in the planet. It's really in the middle of nowhere. It's hardly anymore. But just, I mean, it's like them getting a taste of a shadow of a former life. That's why I like coming to these events. I don't get the chance to go to a lot of them, but I try to. Boy, look, it even goes way over there. Look at that. 
way, way over there. And I was, came from way, way over there at the entrance. Holy moly. branches grew right on top of the ground like that. Interesting. It is weird how some trees grow. These are some quite some big ones. Looks like it might have been more upright at one time. Probably just got too top heavy with the wind. Looks like they have like an artifact thing right here. Kinda of reminds me of something like they would have like a dinosaur world where they have like a fossil dig. All right, dig until you find something. Looks like they also have a archery range here. And some parts of this uh, property you can't go on. It's all open to the public, but just wanted to point that out. We also have a small stage here for some musical entertainment. Something going on right now. Imagine firing those things. There's like a wood walk section. It looks like this is where the archery and the gun range is down here too. So let's see how it looks. Pretty cool. Everyone has their own unique setup. all the time it takes, put all the stuff together, get it all together, set it up, and take it back down. This is cool, version of an old barn. I don't know if there's any horses actually in here. I don't see any. Not sure this was ever really used or it's just a recreation of one. No, there's a few of these. Just living history stop. Oh, you look at it, you can tell you. We've actually been hearing um, gunfire going off, so they're definitely um, practicing with the old guns back there. I don't know if I'll go all the way back there, we'll see. It's huge. It keeps going and going and going over there. We definitely. Okay, you heard that? That's what's going. That's what I've been listening to. So they must be doing it over there somewhere. But I don't think it's this rope here. I don't think they want it, general public going over there. But uh, this would definitely take more than a day to go through this little place and show all the different things. See this? I've seen at least three vendors selling like old-fashioned like root beer and uh, other drinks 
there's one. And I know I see another one down there. So it's definitely some popular. I think I might have seen the one that I saw at the battle in our Cozy Mill, that Civil War reenactment last year. I think they're here too. May check them out again. Let's see. But it's tasty though. I might give it a try again. Here's their version of today's Xbox. Yeah, you don't have to. Oh, that was so fun. Yep. Set of video games. This is what they had back then. Really, really boring. It's so cool to look at. Some cool money reproduction. Other documents. Declaration of Independence and stuff like that. Pretty nice. Taking one of these later, maybe. You know, man, I look like there's a lot of people here. But because this place is so big, there's a lot of people here. It's just so spread out. Like I said, I could, I could do, go around here for a day or a couple days exploring this place. Man, look how cool this is. There's a cannon. Isn't that awesome? They really have some interesting stuff. I don't know how warm this was. I think it's supposed to be buffalo. It's heavy too. Pretty cool, huh? Look at this. This is and heavy too. It's definitely heavy, yeah. Wow. Really soft. <laughs> I'm making some old fashioned um, kettle cord. Wait a minute. So what do you think of it? You like it? Oh, this is good. Sweet. Huh. This bag was nine dollars. Big bag. You got a lot here, though. It's nice and fresh and hot. And, and they're doing it. And they're heating. It's very good. Can you see? Well, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good and fresh. I'm gonna make That's it over there. Like. There's different sizes. Yeah, there's two, five. Five and nine here. Those are the ones that are doing it. Really interesting process. Big part. He just keeps moving around and he tips the fire there and they put the salt and the or sugar into that other pot. It's pretty cool. As long as people. I can't believe how soft these are. Thick. Poor fox, though. Mm. 
So we got some turtle shells. Cool looking but sad too. Especially since I have a turtle. It's just a sample of some of the vendor stuff. There's too much of that stuff here to really show you a whole lot of it. And some of them have very different stuff, some of them have very similar things. But some of it. Does it have to be live or I'll look at a little snout. See that? Those. Mm. So we have Two Pretty peacock feathers. So checking out things. Huh? So are you enjoying this so far? Looking yeah, around? this is nice. Interesting. A lot of history here. Yeah, a little chilly. Yeah, a lot of cool vendors they have I here. Got bottled water. Nice guy gave it to me. He seen me eating the popcorn. Nice. Yeah, a lot of vendors they that selling some food and some other things, which I showed a little bit of. Oh, look at that. Oh, I feel sorry for these little furs. Yeah. They're animals. They have oh. furs and bones and stuff for sale around here. Oh. Canes. Very sad. And that's more of a walking stick. You know what? You can really whack somebody with that one. That could be a weapon. You don't have to have knives. Just get one of those. Whack them in the neck. You're taken care of. Look at this guy. Looks like he's having a nice day. Alligator skins. I think snake skin too, yeah, like python. Dang. They're cool. Of course, you see a lot of alligator heads. That's interesting. Look at that. It's heavy. I bet you that's not cheap either. Alligator claws and stuff. <coughs> I figure they call these, these call them like scoots. These are like the bones in the back of their, on their back, I think. So we got some other, other alligator stuff. We are in Florida, don't forget. So you're gonna see a lot of that. goes on and on and on. This is one big place. I not like you mentioned it, but I just want you to realize there's a lot here at this event. Oh, no. I'll show you later. You can buy one thing. I'm going to show you. are supposed to have some sort of like contest. And some guy explained to me. These guys, they run down there around a pole. So they find these ropes buried underneath in the ground. And one of them has a piece of wood on it. They're supposed to take that rope with the wood on it until they get back over here, across this. But during that time, they can actually fight. And whoever's carrying it, even if even if three people are holding on to it and he's dragging them, whoever carrying it over wins it. Something like that, he said. the significance of this uh, when this started. You did the one I asked either. Well, definitely interesting. I'm gonna wait till they actually start, which I bet you will start soon. They're all getting ready. <laughs> and it's buried it's probably said down there but I could be wrong. All the way I'm <laughs> sorry.
Strength kind of like contest.
I'm not doing it. Basically, from what I understand, each of these living history stops, especially like a little demonstration. They had some bigger demonstrations, but I unfortunately missed them. They were happening about the time I got here, or earlier in the morning. I didn't get here till early afternoon, so I kind of missed them. But I'll show you a list of what they had for today. Oh, they get one cool souvenir, and this is root beer. In case you're wondering, I'll let you know how it tastes a little bit later. Buffalo skins, that is so soft. I tell you, I'm just amazed at how much there's here. Well, at least I'm kind of in, and from some of them from far away. The one I bought the root beer from, he was from Missouri. So uh, they definitely travel to come here. Oh. See that structure there, in case you wonder what those are? Basically, that's kind of like camouflages the outhouses behind there. And that's what basically they are. I've seen some trucks, like, emptying them out. So, if you come here, that's what they use for the bathroom. Could you just explain how you're doing this? Yeah, it's uh, taking, taking wool that's been shaved off the sheep and cleaned and then carded, which is an alignment process to get all the fibers in a line. And then I'm just uh, using the spinning wool, which creates a twist at this point here. There's a control right here, which makes the bobbin go back this way, and that adds more tension, so it actually pulls on it a little bit for me. And by controlling all that and then amount of draft that I allow of the wool to enter the yarn, I can control the gauge of it. Think about how much do you make like in an hour? Oh, Absolutely. you know, I, right now I'm doing demonstration speeds. If I was doing production speeds, it would be, you know, quite a bit faster. Now what happens, this is probably a dumb question, when you're doing this and if the line breaks, do you have to start over or? No, when the line breaks, wool has a, uh, has like, if you look at it under a microscope, it has like fish scales, like it's like, like shingles on a roof. So it can only go in one direction. But it has a tendency to really grab itself really well. So when it comes apart like so, you just really just lay it on top of it, on the piece that's in your hand from the yarn, and just continue the spinning process. That's not a problem at all. Now, if you put a little bit of soap and water on this and you start agitating it, it locks in. This hat, when I made this hat, was like this when I started. And then I just made a couple different layers and started working it on the hat block, uh, agitating it with a thing that looks like a wooden meat tenderizer, and it just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And how long did it take to make that hat? I spent, it took me about three days. I'd say I was doing about maybe four to six hours a day. And is wool the only, can only use this process? Could, could you use cotton or anything like that? No, cotton won't do it. You can spin cotton, but it doesn't behave the same way that wool does. Wool is, wool is what's used for felting. There's synthetic processes of stuff that they call felt, but it's not really what's going on with wool. The people who really got this down were the Mongolians. Now what they would do, and they still do it today, is they would shave their sheep, lay out a blanket, and then lay all the wool down on the blanket and roll it up and then they would tie it to their horses and they would play this game where they're pulling this thing across the field. And it's and by the time they were done playing the game, all that 
wool that had been laid down on those old carpets was now a, a wall for a yurt. Very how, cool stuff. How long did it take you to learn this whole process? Uh, probably, well, it took me a couple of hours to get the drop spindle down, which is the most primitive form of doing it, other than just rolling it on your lap. So once I got the drop spindle down, it, in my head I understood the physics of what the wheel was doing. And then from the drop spindle to the wheel probably was another three or four hours, and then you know, much longer time to really get the gauge right and to get the understanding and be able to spin the wool exactly as thick as I wanted it to be for any given yarn I'm working on. It was pretty quick and of course some people have are better at it than I am, some people are worse. Does a lot of people still show interest in this or you think it's just something that people don't seem to care about a lot now? No, it's huge. There's a lot of people. It's, it's, a, it's a subculture like anything else. But you'll, you'll, you'll see sheep and wool festivals from time to time. And I've seen as many as 30 or 40 spinners all in the same place at the same time. That's good because it's keeping history alive. Yeah. Plus, it's, it's almost like meditating. It's really something that's kind of soothing and calming to do. So you relax a lot when you're doing this? Oh, yeah. yeah. When you get past the first, I'm learning how to do it, struggle part, you know. Great, great. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Michael Barclay. Well, my name is Michael too. It's almost an alias, ain't it? And this is a, this is Carol Lee's tent. This is all her stuff, and I'm just demonstrating for her while she's busy uh, teaching and selling supplies to other spinners and weavers and knitters. Okay. You didn't mind me recording you, did you? Not a bit. I don't. As far as I know, I don't have any warrants pending. <laughs> Just sitting here taking a break. This place is massive. I really only show a small part of it. There's so many vendors and they're dressed in a period clothing and and basically selling stuff that you would buy back then. And I only showed a small part of it, but, but trust me, there's a lot more here. Let's see if you see me a little bit more. Let me pull up my hat. But um, next time I'll have to get here like early in the morning so I can get cut, catch more of the demonstrations. Uh, but like I said, those little signs, those living history stops, you can see like mini demonstrations and they have bigger ones um, scheduled, scheduled throughout the day. Uh, but they most of the time, most of them end like mid early afternoon. It's really some cool stuff. Some cool food items. I, um, as I think I showed earlier, I got some of the popcorn and the root beer. Um, expensive. Expensive, but it's, it's also for the experience. I got a few candy items. They were cheap, some taffy and um, some licorice. Um, and I can show that all when I get home again. Uh, the root beer was 12, and I believe I showed it, but I'll show it at the end. Of course, the popcorn was 9. I bought a brick of green tea. It was $3. Um, hopefully, I can do like a little food review if you want it. I still haven't done it for that uh, black tea I bought at the Battle of Narcosi Mill. But I'm, I'm going to do that soon, I just haven't got around to it yet. But I, when I do, I'll do a little review and let you know how that one is too. And I will be going to the Battle of Narcosi Mill again this year in um, Narcosi right by St. Cloud. It was a really cool event. But and I'm, this event I'm definitely going to come to next year so I can show you more, get here earlier in the day, show you some more of the demonstrations. Um, I'm probably going to head out soon. But if I see anything really interesting, I'll just tack it to the end after this. I gotta say, I'm impressed. This place, it said it has over a thousand participants of people that are dressed up for it and doing demonstrations and selling stuff. And yeah, this is, wow, far more here than I expected. I didn't even get too much of it. This would definitely be um, a full day or two day of walking around here. Luckily, they have it open to the public for two days, but for the rest of the days, it's just closed off to the, like the members or whatever. Um, I've never, like I said, I don't think I mentioned I've never been here before. Um, I have been down the road, not too far from here, at a place called Homeland, Homeland, Homeland Heritage Park, and I did film most of those buildings. It's basically, one of those historical villages, except like one building was closed off, so they're renovating it. But I did drive by there. It's just actually. Um, really on the other side of the street to the entrance to this place 
and eventually I'll go back and um, show the rest. But that's pretty much it. I say, pretty nice. Most of the people's been here has been polite, very nice, except uh, when we first got here. Someone was really rude uh, to us at, um, actually it was the general store in front over a parking space. I'm not going to get into it, but that, that guy wasn't that friendly in my opinion. But other than that, everyone's been here nice. I learned a lot of cool stuff. Got to see some nice demonstrations. Um, just soaked in the atmosphere of the past. Anything else you want to say? The only thing is... You want me to show it? You want to be in camera? No. There the you only go. thing is, um, I wouldn't want to live in this time. No way. No way. Look at these tents. Uh-uh. Not for me. But it's interesting seeing it, huh? Uh, interesting? Yes. That it was. Anything else cool you want to point out that you really enjoyed? They dressed up. The characters are working here all dressed up. And they look kind of cool. But uh, otherwise, uh, they have nice stuff for sale. It depends what you want, what you're looking for. Everything's expensive. Oh. Okay. I'm eating popcorn. Yummy. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, but like I said, um... We're going to be heading out soon. If I see anything else, um, that's really cool, I'll film it. Actually, everywhere you look, you see something really cool looking. Um, I didn't want to show too much of the vendors or the stuff for sale because there was so much here. So I only gave you a little bit of a taste of it. But uh, a lot of neat items. Um, hopefully next year when I come back again, I can bring more money. I only brought a little bit. So I picked up a few things. I'm happy a lot of furs. Yeah, a lot of uh, animal products. I, I, um, I, no, I can't. No, nah, it's just too sad. But I've seen people buying it. Turtle mm. shells, bones, furs. Um, guns. They even had... Um, Crocodile. Penal um, bones from animals. Oh, I missed that. Which I've seen them before at um, the Skeleton Museum in Orlando that I filmed on my channel. Someone had some of them for sale here, too. Yeah, big rugs of a bear. Right. No, I don't think it was a bear. I think it was um, a buffalo. Okay. Yeah. But they have buffalo products, buffalo. which I showed in this channel, so you guys can see. Really soft. I can imagine how warm those things were. But, um, okay. That's it. And, um, people like that. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Let me show you, um, I see people dressed up as different, um, historical hey. characters. I really like the different flags. You see different flags from different yeah. areas around here. Okay, any questions or comments, put them below. Um, Let's see this guy. Wait a minute, and... Um, oops. Sorry about that. So I'll close up my face. If any comments, questions, please put them below. Uh, please check out my channel. I do a lot of different things, tourist stuff like Disney, food reviews, restaurant reviews, um, historical places, museums. Um, I just I do a lot really of stuff. <laughs> so please check out my channel if you I'm like, please subscribe. Good. Okay. Thank you for watching everybody. Bye. Yeah, hi YouTube. I'm back just a second. I just want to do a quick wrap up of a few things I purchased there at this event. Um, I didn't get too much. I mainly was just there with filming. I picked up a few things as I kind of showed. I bought this bottle of root beer. Um, they had at least three places that were selling old timey root beer and old timey pop. Uh, the one I, the the vendor that I seen at the Battle and Narcosi Mill was there, but I didn't go that one this time. I want to try someone else, so I bought it from this one. And here's their card. They had root beer and lemonade. I am not sure they had other flavors. I'm sure they did. I just didn't notice. But uh, they had different size bottles. Uh, colors, different prices. They had a big one I really liked, but it was like $40. I was thinking, eh. Now I'll get a cheaper one for now. Maybe I'll get the bigger one then. But I got this one. And they fill it up in front of you. I got the root beer, of course. This was 12 Really cool looking bottle. Awesome. 
I like the blue. They like I said, different colors, different shapes, different sizes. And I could have got this refilled if I wanted to before I left. I don't remember how much a refill would have been for this size. Refill prices were different for each size. Okay. Uh, just got a few candy items. I might do a review video on this. Was uh, this was a dollar? Never tried this kind of taffy before, so I thought, why not? Then I bought a couple of these from the same place, and these are uh, black licorice. Actually, ate one of them. Um, so it's not bad. This was two for a dollar. And then I couldn't go anywhere as well buying any tea. I was looking for tea, and they had um, a brick, a little brick of green tea. This was three. So smells interesting. I still have the one I got at the Battle and our Cozy Mill. I haven't done yet. When I do that, I'll, I'll show the whole process and how to do. It. I never did tea like this before. I have an idea how to do it, but um, when I do, of course, I'll show it all. Uh, that is it for things I picked up. Like I said, I didn't intend to really get much in the way of souvenirs, so I didn't really get too much, but I want to show you what I got, and um, hopefully I'll be able to go uh, next year. Okay, um, any comments or questions, please let me know, and thanks again for watching. And hopefully, if I do go to, oh, I should mention, hopefully if I do get a chance to go next year, I get there and film more of the demonstrations that they had planned. Which, wait a minute, I before I go, I should, yeah, that's right, I should show you guys the map a little bit better. Now this was spread over 300 acres, like 325. The place was huge. And I only really got to a small part. It's so big they actually had to give roads and street names to it. That's from a satellite. This was giving you locations of everything. And then here's some of the demonstrations, but I didn't really get the chance to see any of these. I generally had a good time except in the beginning. Some of those working there wasn't very polite to mom and I. I'm not gonna get into that here. But okay. That's it. Finally, I'm actually going. Alright, thank you for watching. Hope everyone has a nice day. And this is my, and I'm not sure I mentioned this earlier, but this is my first video you've ever seen of me. Please check out my channel. I do a lot of food review videos. I do tourist stuff like Disney, historical places, museums, abandoned places I explore, unboxing videos. I just do a lot. So if you can check out my channel, if you like, please subscribe. Alright, thank you everyone for watching. Hope everyone has a nice day. Bye, everybody. Bye.